Good afternoon from Okinawa, Japan, home of Okisubis. We got a, another one for you guys. I was actually already working on the car, and I was thinking, oh, shoot, I should record this for you guys. We'll be able to tear down this engine. And uh, we got some pretty cool comments that people are liking the teardowns and kind of looking at the uh, comparison and just looking at what we have over here in Japan. So this one right here is a GVB versus the GRB, which is its hatchback brother. This is the sedan version of that same model. Um, it's like a two, 08, well in Japan 07 and up, but 08 to 14 um, model here. And uh, it's actually from a local shop. They, I don't know exactly the, too much of the details. Something with timing belt, the engine is basically seized, it won't even turn over anymore. Uh, it seems like something is really wrong, at least with the timing in itself. So they have asked us to just put in another used engine. And in the process, we get to keep the old one. So that means we're going to tear it down, and it is a version um, 10 and up engine. So it does have the thicker cylinder walls, uh, dual AVCS, electronic throttle body, and it's an EJ207. It is a 2.0. In Japan, we do not have the 2.5s in these unless it is the A-line, which is the automatic version. So I thought it'd be pretty cool. And I'm just going to tear the engine out. Um, we're going to put the other engine in. We won't do too much of recording on that. However, um, I'll put the engine on the stand. And then we'll start tearing it apart so I can show you guys a little bit about the version 10 and up. All right, guys, so we're back. We have the engine out already. The other car, the blue one, you can barely see it right there. Engine swap's already done. It's running, and uh, it'll be picked up tomorrow. Um, however... We still got to break down this engine for you guys. We're going to take check out this version 10. They said that the timing belt was done, the engine seized, and I'm looking at it right now. I just checked the timing. The timing is perfect, and then I rotated it, and it rotated perfectly fine. So they said they did the timing belt, then they had to do the timing belt again, and then when they brought it here, it was seized up. We literally pushed the car in here, and we didn't even uh, try to start it. They already brought another engine. They're already going to pay us for the swap. There's really no point to uh, diagnose this one here. They didn't ask us to, but now I'm really curious on what happened to this engine because timing is good. Maybe it was uh, done wrong once and then it hit the valves and then they redid it properly. Who knows, but you're gonna find out with me. I'm gonna go ahead and tear this thing apart. My biggest thing is I just wanna tear apart the version 10 just to show you guys the differences between the version 10 and then the version 7, 8, and 9. It's actually a really cool difference. I've already taken the front off. I'm going to go ahead and continue to pull off all the timing belt assemblies. Then we're going to come back with, um, yeah, just a bare long block. So interesting usually you can tell when a timing belt has been just done brand new and the marks are not very clear on this so I feel like it's not something super recent See the number 78 11 millimeter pump on the version 10. One thing that I really like is the fact that the ABCS line is separate from the oil feed line. Um, if you've ever had an issue or had a customer that tried twisting the, the turbo feed line off without holding this one down, it's a 17 just like that here and then you you have a top portion that you release but you have to hold this portion out you spin the whole thing and you can ruin it and having to replace this whole entire line uh, without actually popping off everything that I just pulled off is very difficult um, actually it's impossible you have to remove everything up on top here or you just end up doing a aftermarket line um, which is what always ends up happening because you know, you're not going to want to pay for labor to pull the whole manifold off when you can just replace it with an aftermarket one. So, but it's just really nice that they're separate just in case if something were to happen um, to that back one, 
you would just replace that back one with an OEM one and you'd be good to go. So there's a bare long block. Again, here's the oil pump. You see the number 78. That is a 11 mil oil pump. And these ones here. The shape of the AVCS line is different on this side here. Um, I'm sure you guys noticed four AVCS cams. So this is a dual AVCS system. Uh, the version 729s are the single AVCS just on the intake side. So this has on the intake and exhaust side. But the first thing that you're going to notice, I'll pull up another head from a version 7, 8, or 9. And these ports take the entire gasket up. These ones are way bigger. So that's the first thing that you notice is one, dual AVCS, two, big ports. Big, big ports on these ones here. Wait till you check out the, uh, the short block here. So... Uh, just going to pop off the heads here. I'll remove the oil pan. Not really any point in uh, recording all that, I don't think. So I'm just going to come back with the heads off and short block bare. All right, we are back. We have a few things uh, all dismantled here. A little short block right there. We have the heads right here. Um, looking at everything, it is definitely wasn't anything with the uh, the timing belt. If you are to look... Let me see if I can actually get it on the camera here. It's really hard to tell, but my first clue, I said, okay, I wonder if you could see that. Yeah, some pretty decent pitting in there um, around the cam journals and then the, the cams themselves. I said, that's uh, one cool thing about these is look at that. It's hollow. The cams are hollow. These are the version 10 cams. That's uh, one difference there. So what we'll do now is we're gonna go ahead and we will continue to uh, tear apart the short block. And uh, yeah, get that thing all torn apart and do a little comparison towards the end right here. That's really what it's all about. I just wanna go ahead and get everything on the table here and kind of go through it all just to show you guys what's different. Look at that, nighttime vision, nighttime, uh, scene of Oki Subis, all oh, them Subarus back there. Ooh, yeah. All by myself. Dylan already went home. I just want to tear this thing apart. Um, we were right. It had nothing to do with timing. It was actually the bearing failure. I threw away the bearings and rods already, but you can see it's pretty bad. So what happened was the bearings, they flipped over and pressed against the rod, against the crank, and that's what seized up the engine. And when we were moving it, we were able to move it. But uh, yeah, so it was bearing failure, not bad timing. It was just bad timing. But anyway, so we have the version, uh, version 7 block out now. In the States and a lot of places in the world, uh, maybe even the version 10 and up too, but more specifically, the Bug Eye, Blob Eye, Hawk Eye, EJ-207 in Japan is very well known. And it's, it's well known for holding good power. As a matter of fact, this is the same engine setup that we had in Dylan's car, the GF8. Uh, 3076 hour setup, dual wastegate. It was a twin scroll setup. Um, all we had was ARP head stubs in that thing, running 26 PSI, and it ran amazing for a long time. The EJ207s, if you look up on top here, this block, the EJ207s in Japan, are essentially the same thing as the EJ257s, except for this is the diameter of the 92 mil pistons versus the 99 millimeter pistons is essentially what makes the blocks different. The 2.0, try to follow with me, the 2.0 comes with a 75 millimeter crank. The 2.5 liter comes with a 79 millimeter crank. That extra stroke is what makes it a 2.5 liter in conjunction with the, the piston size. 
So that's why they do 2.1 liters with a 79 millimeter crank and the 2.0 with stroke efficiency. That extra stroke is what gets you that 2.1 and some change. So, a little recap on the, on the version 7 setups right here. Again, this is pretty well known. But let's take a look. I'm going to go ahead and kind of get like a basic measurement. Keep in mind, guys, this is thicker than the USDM 2.5 liter. Let's go ahead and now, let's take a look at the version 10s. Look at that, guys. That is way bigger than the version 7 setup. So if you kind of look at it, let's try to get a bird's eye view of just these two next to each other. Man, this thing looks beefier, and this one looks like it's almost a 2.5 liter. It's not. This is a 2.0. <laughs> That's so crazy. So... The version 10 and up have a super beefy cylinder wall. Um, just this top portion right here is a little bit thinner, but that's just because it's so much wider. It's really nice setup. We're really interested in taking these blocks, putting forged pistons in them, doing no clues deck setup, and just pushing the power and seeing what we can do. So look for that in the future. Again, a lot of guys are using these even in GCH and GDB setups. If their if engine fails, they'll get a brand new short block, kind of like what you guys are doing in the States with the RA uh, short blocks. In Japan, we're doing that except for it's the 2.0 liter with these cylinder walls and just dropping in a short block with version 7 heads and sending it to the moon, as some people say. All right, next, it's not just the blocks. The heads in Subarus are the most important part when it comes to swapping and taking parts over. Your 16-bit ECU inside of a bug-eye, blob-eye type setup is going to be different than the version 10 and up, a 32-bit ECU. You can't just put this whole engine inside of a bug-eye and expect it to run. The cam sensors and everything like that are completely different. You have to use just the short block. But unless you're using an aftermarket ECU. But we still want to talk about the version 10 and the differences. And this right here is this heads for that version 7. Come take a look at this. This is what I was telling you guys before. You see you have that that lip all around. Okay? All around here. Now, let's take this, put it on the version 10 setups, and look it. It completely covers up the whole edge. The ports are even bigger. What does that mean, right? So, version 7 to 9, JDM EJ207s are already known for having bigger ports than the EJ205 in the States. Version 10 and up have even bigger ports than that. They're dual ABCS. Again, as we saw before, the cams are hollow. And, uh, yeah, it's a full... Yeah, the, the engine, version 10 setup. It's just a, a pretty stout engine setup. I think that's for the most part the biggest difference. However, we do have a pretty cool tech tip for you guys sticking to the end. The version 10 EJ207 and the version 10 and up EJ257, because the cams, the crank, and everything, they're all the same, you can literally swap engines over, right? So GRBs, BABs, those types of setups, the heads and the ECUs are pretty much the same. That means for you guys in the States that have an EJ257 with dual ABCS, drive-by wire setup, you should be able to take a JDM EJ207, the version 10 that we're talking about, this BP setup with big ports and big cylinder walls, and drop it into a stateside setup and be re revving out to 8,000 RPMs straight out, you know, straight out the, what do you say? Straight out of the box. Straight out of the box. So, yeah. I think that's all we got. Um, if there's any more information that you guys want to know about these engines and whatnot, let us know in the comments. We have a few other ones set up. We have a Twin Turbo VE Legacy. We're in the middle of doing that video also. A lot of guys wanted the Twin Turbo content, so that one will be out next after this one. Stick around and take a look at that. Arigato!